Hey, good morning, good morning. David Foster. How are you, man? Good in yourself, Leroy. Good morning to you and the viewers. It's such an honor to be here. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And it's an honor to have you here. We appreciate you taking out your time. Um, ladies and gentlemen, today we've got a man of many talents. Um, I'm going to read out his, his bio now. So this is David Foster, man of many talents. He's a taxi owner. So we're going to chat about today, which I know you guys are interested. I'm interested. We're going to talk about, about his entrepreneurial journey. We'll also talk about, he's a taxi owner, which is interesting, guys. A taxi owner. And we'll touch on the taxi industry um, a few points. I'll ask him a few questions on the taxi industry. So if you are logging in, you've got any questions, if you are logging in live and you've got questions for him about the taxi industry, we're going to talk about his new ventures as well. And so it's going to be a, it's going to be fun. Eh? So how's it going? Are you, are you at the office or are you at home? Uh, I couldn't leave home because I was under the anxiety that I might not be in time for the interview unless I attend to this interview before I start my day. Yeah. So it's quite a privilege to be here, Leroy. And can I also use this opportunity to thank you for the incredible work that you are doing, you know, um, and using your gift of entrepreneurship so so effectively, you know, um, to have these sort of platforms, etc. So, um, yeah, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. You know, it's not about us coming on here and, and telling our stories, but it's also about you giving us the platform. And we want to express gratitude for that today. Thanks, Thank you. Leroy. I appreciate yeah. it. Actually, all, glory you know, all glory to God. All glory to God. Yeah, you're actually one of our one of my favorite hosts at the moment. Yeah, I've I've done a couple of uh, uh, you know chats with, with with other guys, but yeah, you stand you you tend to stand out at the moment. Yeah, so well done. Yeah, I'm up there with 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 Joe Rogan and Patrick B and Steve Harvey and them. Yeah, yeah we just need to get you a nice studio with the you know with the round seat a round mm -hmm. table and a lacquer chair um to take this thing to the next level yeah so maybe that's your next calling who knows i think that's the i think that's the thing get a studio maybe i need i think what i do need is i need a bigger house because i don't want to leave my house i want to build a huge studio so i think i need a bigger house so that's a good one thanks 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 um guys so so let's see who we have online david before we start okay. let's see who's on here um Okay, there we go, it's live. Right. Okay, we've got Vincent the Rolanda, Natasha Foster. Regina, Natasha Cousins. Hello, Nakes. Tell me, is everyone with the surname Foster their family? Before we start. Yeah, it's quite it's quite uh unique in a sense that somehow we are related, eh? Somehow or the or the other. And and that's mm -hmm. that's usually evident at funerals, at weddings, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's quite safe to conclude that we are related somehow. But this, the this particular name, Natasha Foster, that's that's close. That's close to home. So yeah, that's blood. No, oh, I thought I thought she was gonna say, "Listen, this man is claiming family now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, how's it? So I think, um, David, let's get into it. So guys, we go. So as I said, a man of many talents, guys. He's a taxi owner, he's an entrepreneur. Um, now, 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 this is not all going to make sense. He's a financial planner, certified financial planner. Um, he was a banking manager, community leader in Reicher Park. He's from Reicher Park. Um, a golfer. Now that I can attest to, he's a golfer. We played together last week, week before that. <laughs> golfer, I can. But then he wrote down he's a pianist as well, which that one I'm 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 a bit skeptical about. <laughs> pianist, you play the piano, David. That's correct, Leroy. Um, yeah, some 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 close family and friends would uh, uh, would have witnessed me um, at some form of the other show or church playing the piano. So yeah, some yeah, family. I mean, we, yeah, so you 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 were here quite a few times. You saw the piano, so I saw uh, that. Yeah, so I'm perspective to say, well, 
you know, it actually means something. So there is a significance behind the piano that's standing here in the lounge, as you know. I think, I think, I think, guys, if, if anyone's ever heard him or seen him play the piano, please comment in the comment section because um, I've seen the piano, but I've never heard it. So he's a pianist, guys. He's, he's owned a football team and been a football manager, and he's on second year Bible school. So powerful, powerful good dude. So I think David, maybe before we get into what you're doing now, Tell us about your career before you got into taxis and before you started your businesses. What were you doing? Where were you doing it? And why were you doing it? Okay. I, I spent bulk of my career, obviously, in the financial sector, financial and insurance sector. I've worked for Standard Bank. I've worked for APSA. I've worked for Outsurance. I've worked for Liberty Life, just to name a few companies. So I've always had the financial background, you know. Um, after concluding my studies at UJ and Vits, uh, part on a part-time basis through Standard Bank. So I've always been in the financial sector for most of my career. Um, yeah, so that in 2015, 2014, I had opportunity um, or the opportunity came about through my dad where I had an opportunity to invest in the taxi business. And I took half of my pension fund I left the bank um, as an insurance and product uh, manager of insurance in the vehicle finance space. And I invested in the business. I bought my first quantum. Yeah, and I just, you know, as, like they said, the rest is history. So I just carried on from there. So this was 2015, you say? Correct. You bought the first quantum. Yes. Which one? How much is a quantum? I'm just curious. I don't, I don't know how much is it. It's very expensive. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still trying to understand why, but yeah, I suppose it's because it's Toyota. It's very reliable. So a Quantum could cost you minimum 250K. And that's a second end, eh? Is that a second end one? Yeah, second end, 250,000, yeah. But I guess, but, I guess it's an asset, eh? I'm, I'm, like buying, I'm not buying a normal car like, like we buy, um, which is a liability. Uh, buying a taxi is an, is an asset. It is a valuable asset, um, depending on what you're going to use it for, the purpose. So, you know, when you buy your first quantum, there must be purpose for it. There must be an opportunity waiting for it. So you, it's not something that you buy that's going to stand in the yard and then you wait for opportunity to come or you do, you know, the groundwork afterwards. So before you buy, before you buy, you know, you, you purchase that asset, you must have a plan. Similarly to the, you know, the property market, before you buy or before you invest, you must have uh, a tenant base. You must know your market, you know, your target market. What are you looking to do with that asset to play basically to generate some form of income for you? Okay. I was going to, so basically what you're saying is before you buy the quantum, you need to have an opportunity. Now, I was going to ask you this question later on, but seeing that you're talking about having an opportunity now, how do you get an opportunity? Let's say myself, Leroy Slava, I've got 250,000. I want to get into the taxi industry. Um, how do I get the opportunity? How do I get in? How would the process work? Okay, so if I look at, uh, you know, if I speak in, in present terms, right? Um, current terms, the, the taxi industry is quite saturated. It's, it's um, government uh, is already and they've started already the process of recapitalization of taxis because it's so flooded. So what it's not, it? what it's not it? easy to get into the taxi industry at the moment so, because it's full, you know what I mean? Um, government is looking at other modes of, although taxis are, of course, the primary mode of public transport in South Africa at the moment, government is still looking at other um, instruments uh, or other mediums or, um, you know, in promoting public transport usage like buses, trains, the car trains, you know, the BRT yeah. systems, etc. And that is also the BRT, in fact, is coming to the East Rand. Um, they actually, it's already started in Tembisa. It's, it's rolling past the Awartambo airport as we speak. So those those things are already underway in the background. So the way we fit in as the taxi industry, we obviously we, we hold on to the routes that, that's been allocated to us on a, on, a, on a local basis, you know, within our geographical areas, et cetera. But somehow or the other way, we would get affected by these government rollouts or initiatives. So, yeah, 
So it's it's not easy to get into the taxi industry as we speak, Leroy. It's it's quite flooded, yeah. So 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 the government. So what so what you're saying is that the government is coming with with other modes of public transport, which obviously the taxi guys are not happy with. And if the taxi guys are not happy, then the country stops. Ajila 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 ni happy as it and then and we don't amal and then we don't amal. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure whether I should comment on behalf of the taxi association, <laughs> the taxi bodies. But yeah, from a, from a, in my personal capacity as a taxi owner, the experience, you know, being part of those things where where we were challenged, you know, um, where basically our personal income has been challenged, you know. Um, I think it's also industry who unites when 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 we call to do so. Um, you know, there's a it's it's they they you know I always say there is people behind every taxi, you know they, they, there's a family behind every taxi driver. Although there's the perception that you know taxi drivers they are ruthless or they you know they think they own the roads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is there is a family behind um, every taxi owner. There is a family behind every taxi driver, and we as taxi owners we get the we have the privilege of of seeing that and making a difference into someone else's life so yeah um that's why if if our income or if our roots are threatened it's 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 quite the obvious expression that you would have people united in in fighting a common cause like mm. you know yeah. and it's, it's, it's exercising their democratic right at, uh, at the end of the day like <laughs> any uh, other civilian or south african right <laughs> <laughs> very well said david um we unite um yeah, yeah, we come together democratically. Well done. Um, you've been asked that question before. Eh? Maybe. Because <laughs> that answer was just so diplomatic and politically correct. Um, well done there. Now tell me, so you think, but, but this this question is for me, for myself. When is the BRT going to come in Boxburg, going to come to Boxburg town? Okay, so uh, what I do know through our taxi local taxi association structures there is a task team that has been formed which our uh, uh, taxi association members are part of so they meet with the province or the district as a whole um as we speak obviously it's been fully rolled out on the in, in tembisa as well as um, the Owartambo route but get, you know coming to eastern more past eastern more past boxburg going down Reedfontein, that's part of the plan it's within that scope the, the the project rollout obviously forms a phase rollout approach. Um, there is, of course, hostility by some tax associations for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. They feel that, you know, we're not going to allow government to penetrate our shores, you know, because obviously it's going to dampen our income. But obviously there is compensation for those who um, is, 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 is obviously offering their taxi up, um, you know, um, as, as part of the process so as we speak it's difficult to say any you know in timeline in terms of timelines but given the the development so far and judging from where they are i think within the next year or two we should start seeing buses past israel more down read fontaine you know past our box work cbd yeah okay that's interesting but you say you're saying there is compensation for those that are affected for the taxi owners that are affected that goods are affected by the buses yeah, it's correctly right. Yeah, so obviously um, that it, uh, after follow, you know, and I think those consultations are still underway with the taxi industry. That's why a company by the name of KTVR is started. So KTVR stands for Kempton Park, Tembisa, Fosloris, Reicha Park. It's a company that's been formed where you'll have basically government as part of their consultative uh, approach in rolling out the PRT system. Um, They've undertaken that, you know, they're going to involve taxi, taxi, the taxi industry and also empower us. Um, so as we speak, there's various workshops that's being, you know, that's being hosted by the by the same company. In fact, my sister works. Uh, she used to work there as well. So um, other family members also work there. You know, they take people directly out of the taxi industry and they employ them. So that's also part of government giving back. You know to the taxi industry to say well this company exists because of you so we're gonna ensure that you guys are empowered so we we quite uh humbled and you know we 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 quite um thankful for uh, in that respect that you know it's not just one of those things where 
we have to offer up our assets and you know our our you know our words our, our lives worth that we've been working on for 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 many years you know it's, it's generational these taxis as you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> our, our taxis is her own you know the next generation in fact my dad um you know he got his first taxi from his from his father i got my first take well i got the first uh opportunity through my dad because my dad was quite you know he was very strict as you know so yeah, he didn't yeah make it easy for any of my for me or my siblings he said well if you want to come into the tech industry you need to invest in that so it's I quite embedded. yeah it's, it's quite embedded in in us you know it, it's 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 a family business it's the fact the taxi industry has put us through varsity through school um you know um it allowed us to buy houses in suburbs you know so those sort of things so it's quite it's quite embedded uh, uh business it means everything to us that's you know especially the next generation and the challenge is now on us to basically take it to the next level what our forefathers as well if you want to call it that. wow that's what you're saying as a generational that's 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 that's, 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 that's great. and it is you know my father you know still alive my uncle is also in the in the taxi um industry and he was actually i think he was the chairman before the chairman of the is it the Reicher Park Taxi Association before your father? Yeah. Way Panda. back, Panda, yeah, and, and way back, and my father said, yes. Yes. yes, and my father said, close, why, don't you, why don't you get out of the taxi industry or something like that? If I remember, and he said, listen, this is all I know. I've been doing it for 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 so long. This is this is this is what I know, and this is all I know, basically. So, yeah. so that's quite interesting where you say it's a generational um, business. Now, David, his nickname is Kula. You can see, you guys can see his name. There's his middle name is Kula. Um, I don't know why. I, I suppose it's my late uncle, my dad. Uh, it's my dad's uh, brother. Um, he, he said I look like an Indian, so he called me Kula. So I don't know. Do you agree with I don't know. I'm not sure. But my granny was Indian, so yeah, she's she was from the Nauli, the roots. She's got she's got the roots there, yeah. And that's why my cousin's name is Zulu. You know Zulu, <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that's where okay. it comes from. So so uh, Zulu, that name, because he spent bulk of his teenage years uh, across the house from my granny. There was a compound, so like a hostel. Yeah. So he got a, he got along with all the the the, the guys there at the hostel. So they, so he was then uh, baptized as Zulu, and then they found it relevant that I'm baptized as Kula because I look like an Indian. So yeah, so we have our roots. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Now, now, now it's all coming together. Now yes. it's all coming together. Now, David, is you from your experience as a taxi owner, is it profitable to? Is it a profitable business um, to get into? Is it profitable owning a taxi? Yeah, uh, it is. It is. It 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 is profitable, depending how you manage it, right? Um, well, if you're going to be hands on, if you're going to run it like a business, a proper but formal business, have the relevant structures in place, um, you, you will see the, you will see the the numbers at the end of the day. So um, I always say, you know, taxi business, it must be seen as as any other form of business um, mm. for you to reap the success out of it. So, for example um when you know just giving you a practical example in my world before we moved um this side um out of Reicha park we had to basically for a year and a half my wife and i we had to make sacrifices in a sense uh build our financial uh, uh, uh um, strength to able to, and so what what we had to do is for as part of that process every you know they say it's a cash business so yeah. you know you, it's a instead of taking cash at hand we had to bank that money mm. and then and show to the bank that that we that 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 you know the, the the system is profitable it is well managed i didn't come up with i had to ask my accountant to do my financials for that for for for, for that matter for 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 three years um you know and 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 based on that that basically put put ourselves in good stead to apply for a bond um, mm. you know, in some park so and it was approved thank god for that so so, so it's just how you manage your finances. If you're not going to manage it well, it's going. It's if I say 
die Liebe von, äh, von, von Mond, äh, von Anton Mond, so whatever. Mm. Yeah, that, that's saying, it's going to be yeah. gum like that. So that's the unfortunate reality for, for, for some, with, if, if you don't manage it well. That's why I try to always, you know, if you, if you look at my drivers and, and then, you know, the, the, the people that we've been with, in fact, they become family afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, I've always kept drivers for many years, at least um, all the drivers that, 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 that I have. Okay, some of them come from my dad, but yeah, they've been working for me at least minimum five years or longer. So, you know, that just gives you a sense um, in terms of if, you, if you're going to manage your people well, if you're going to look up, acknowledge that they are also you know, human beings, you know, at the end of the day and give back in some form or the other and look after them. Mm. Uh, um, and make sure that you have a hands-on approach. You've got relevant systems in place as far as maintaining your taxi. So, yeah. for example, when I say systems, I don't have to be at the taxi rank every day. I don't have to be, um, you know, uh, around at the taxi ranks every day because I've got systems in place. My mm. drivers know that they do, if I need anything as far as the taxi is concerned, whether it be spares, whether it is a breakdown, I've got a tow truck service. Right, that I've partnered up with. I've got an elect uh, electrician that I've partnered up with. Mm. Obviously, we're in the spares business now, so it just makes it easier. So they know we just a WhatsApp or phone call away in that regard. So business still continues, even if you're not around. So those sort of systems you have to put in place in order for your business to, to run successfully at the end of the day. So I can sit in meetings, but my business will still continue. And it's also giving uh, drivers the, the accountability and, and, and grooming them you know, to, to, to acquire assets of their own. So that, that I always say to my driver, before you call me, think about a solution. So when you call me, you, by then they know they should have come up with a solution. Instead of giving me the problem, I always ask, what is the solution? So yeah. that's all. So it's also how you manage your people and your workers, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. So that's also imperative. And, and that, that determines your profitability at the end of the day. Because if you're going to have unhappy people like in every corporate or any corporate environment or company, you know, it, it's going to put a damp in the atmosphere of workers, you know, more workers morale goes down, etc. So the tech industry is no different. If you're not going to have staff that are motivated, that has a good morale, has a, you know, you're doing things to motivate them and keep them happy, you're not going to see the numbers at the end of the day. So that's good. So because so, so, your, success, your success depends on them being honest and reliable and happy. So, so that's, you said a lot there. Um, David, you, because we started with it's a cash business, yeah. right? And that's the idea that most of us have. Look, I've never had taxis. I don't know much about it. Um, I've got an overall understanding, but not 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 the details of the business. Um, we take it as a cash business. You take that cash that comes in, um, whichever amount it is per day, and you take that, you either put it wherever you keep it, and you never bank it or you never declared you're yeah, saying those, the are, those are the old school guys you're saying those are the old school guys the new the new um generation is is is, is making it more as a formal business because obviously there's benefits in in as you said you got a bond because of it so there's benefits in in in, in formalizing it yeah you have to manage your finance as well literally you know it, it, it's it's um, it's quite tempting when you when you have five drivers coming in and also you know they're giving you money from um, on a daily basis. That's that's um, you know one just tend to use that money for something else. But if you've mm -hmm. got a system in place, I saw for example, I had to go and register a company. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and as we speak, as part of BRT, uh, the rollout, what they're saying to taxi to the taxi industry, you must have a company registered. You must mm -hmm. have. A, Bet you must be vet registered. You must have a SARS compliant uh, certificate. In fact, government goes further and they say, well, in order for you to give, in order for us to give you a taxi permit, you must have a, a SARS tax clearance certificate so, or TCS. But your tax compliance status must mm. be must be in order. So those sort of things just speaks volume to, to to the fact that there's a good responsibility on us as the taxi industry to formalize ourselves and and catch up with what's happening out there to reap the benefits of the economy is basically uh, offering us so you're not going to tap into those benefits unless you actually uh, regulate yourself so i had to re regulate myself instead of you know move away from the cash business etc 
unfortunately, you pay a lot on <laughs> bank charges. <laughs> we were... Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. double edged sword, eh? Because you formalize yourself. Yeah. Now, you pay a lot of tax. You now you pay, pay tax, which, which before you didn't pay tax. Now, now I think I think the mistake too that some of the guys do, they probably bank all the money in their personal name instead of registering a company and putting it into a company account, which means when a company you'll pay what 28 percent uh, minus expenses when your personal capacity you can, can go anywhere up to 45 percent that's correct so automatically right as a taxi owner uh you you tend to fall in the higher tax bracket and that's the unfortunate mm -hmm. reality because yeah. obviously well it depends on how long you um you know you've you've uh your 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 returns are outstanding etc so that's also part of the whole process but obviously that's why we rely on accountants and, you, and those are your best friends i think you always say that professionals are your best friends Leroy. lawyers uh, attorneys conveyances uh, accountants those are your best friends uh, yeah. at the end of the day so you just need to stay close to those guys that's, uh, as much of us you know as we you know, it's, it's it's a bit of a grudge thing you know i've made i've worked so hard now i need to give the revenue service 15 percent of my earnings or whatever of everything that i've made or whatever the tax bracket might be but the reality is you know government is getting smarter mm -hmm. uh we just had we just had sars uh, three weeks ago although we, we we missed our target they've collected over 1.2 trillion in revenue um and they you know they're clamping on in terms of people that that has assets overseas they're un undeclared assets so they claim mm -hmm. they're getting they're catching up you know what I mean? So somewhere or the other, uh, we actually spoke uh, yesterday about it as well, uh, reflecting to our new business. What we've done now is put all structures in place already, you know, making sure that we have, that our root and our foundation is solid. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to make money and five years later and SARS comes in and they say, well, you owe me five million. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they want yeah, it, they wanted cash. They wanted cash. So, mm. yeah, so pay, pay as you earn, Having being vet uh, registered, those things are quite important right now. Being on the CSD, supply, you know, central uh, supplier databases of government, those are all tools that you need to, you know, that you need to get on board uh, with. But at the same time, it produces opportunities for you. Opportunities in the sense that it, it puts you in a state that you'll be able to apply for tenders. It's not just about the taxi industry. Yes. So, it, so it, it creates a world of other opportunities as well. So. You know, I might be in Texas, etc. But as we speak, there's a lot of other things that are happening in the background, and thank God for opportunities as well um, that are coming our way. And we can only reap the benefits of those opportunities if we have the necessary documentation in place. So, yeah. So you must have your compliance. You must have your BE certificates. You must have your SARS. You must have your financials. You know, those sort of things are imperative to to basically compete in this economy. Mm, thanks, thanks, David. And, and I think all those things, as we said, all those things cost you money, but they're actually there to make you money and to save you money. So you don't look at us as a accountants and attorneys. You look at them. We call them our power team. Okay. Yeah. We call them so I'll, power I'll, team. I'll, I'll adopt the same term from now on. Yeah. <laughs> when I see them. To make you money and to save you money. And a lot yeah. of people look at it that to say that it's going to cost me this much or this much to get financials or to get this but in the long run they're supposed to save you money and not and not take your money so, so i think you you gave a lot of good tips there manage so so you say it is profitable if you manage your taxi well if you manage your driver well if you've got systems and if you treat them well if i if i can summarize that that's correct you're right um and also Keep abreast of what's happening in the industry. You know what I mean? The taxi industry, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a game on its own. Like any other uh, uh, industry, it's, you know, how, you know, you should know how to play the game for, for, that, yeah. for that matter. When I say know how to play the game, you should know your routes. The routes, what takes, what's the rate of return on every route, the expected rate of return. Know what's happening within the, you know, within the market. So, for example, uh, on the East Rain Mall route, you know, you've got Leroy Merlin, that huge, um, they're competing now with uh, 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 Boulder's yeah, Warehouse as, as, a, as a multinational corporate, you know what I mean? So, obviously, that's the conversation you're going to have with your driver. There's now people, more people employed on that route, so which means, excuse me, your daily rate of return should also increase. 
So those, are, you know, you can't just so you can't just sit blindly and say, well, I'm, you know, um, as long as I'm making money, but you don't keep abreast of what's actually happening out there. And at mm. the same time, you also should be aware of the challenges. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, for example, private trips happening on 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 the same route as your taxi. So you also need to play in it and say, why is that the case? So you need to up or improve your service delivery on that particular uh, uh, route as well and ask yourself, you know, why are people leaving taxis or public transport and forming their own personal lift clubs for that matter? So what happens in a situation like that, David? Let's say now you've got your route past Leroy Merlin or Eastland Mall, wherever it is, then now I come with my bucky and I take 10 people and put them in the bucky and I take them to work and I drop them off. What, what happens in, in a situation like that? Well, I think to be quite honest, uh, it go, it, it's, it's obvious that that's why there's over, you know, there's there's the seeming violence, and it mm. seems that it's coming from the taxi industry. But in reality, is like I alluded to earlier that, you know, we are also people. We also have families and stuff like that. But I'm uh, justifying acts of violence. But what I'm saying is, you know, people tend to take it personal when mm. those things happen because they look at it and they say, well, you are stealing from us is the taxi industry so there is quite a process involved with regards to that i'm just going to reflect on it not speaking on behalf of the taxi association office because they have their relevant structures in place and they're doing a good job on that front but um basically you get you you call the the route marshal in so that there's route uh, marshals for every or rank managers for example on every route or every rank so that marshal then reports that to the office Right, uh, the office then, which consists of a structured co executive team, you've got a chairman, treasurer, and those guys. So they then dispatch a, a task team with the with the owners, and they obviously approach that particular company and say, "Well, you know, um, if it's a obviously if it's a if it's a minibus taxi, like a, even a, you know the size of a minibus taxi, it's going to be a problem. But if it's a bucky, you know, if it's a, a, a small." car i don't think it poses a much bigger issue mm. but for let's use the example like you using your your private minibus uh caravan or 10 seater for that matter so obviously you know um it, it becomes then a conversation in terms of between the association and that company or that entity entity to say well um you know let's get let's read some form of understanding as to what's happening and 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 not, not not always does those things turn out well, but most of the time, if you, if it gets approached well, if it's managed well, in mm. terms of the engagement, you know, people tend to come back to the taxi, uh, public transport. But most of it is is alluded to service issues. So people say they have to along the taxis. Um, yeah. You know that sort of thing. Mm. At the end of the day, it's not justified uh, in the sense that, you know, everybody should uh, do as they please. There is structures in place. There is a tax association. So those those uh, 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 those pa patrons, they obviously can follow the due process by complaining, by logging complaints. There is formal processes that are tax associations mm -hmm. as in place for, for patrons to basically log uh, their issues. Okay. Instead of it's running away. Yeah, no thanks for that. Now, how is you know what you know what what I've always been curious about? How is the how is the fares calculated? How do we know how do, how do you say okay this one is 10 rand, that one is 15 rand, that one is 20 rand? Um what's in the 10 how, how do you calculate that in the 10 rand or or how do you how, how do you guys get to that amount? Okay, so this is just my experience spending you know uh, time with my dad being the chairman at the time. So, you know, mm -hmm. going with him to meetings or spending time with him and, and, and getting feedback in terms of, and also my experience and my observations. Uh, firstly, they look at the route, uh, the distance of the route, clear why. Um, obviously, a longer route, stretch of route would, would incur bigger cost in terms of maintenance, in terms of stops, etc. So therefore, mm -hmm. it's going to be more than a local route for that matter. So, the, so the, your, your distance is imperative. The, the yeah. other things that they look at is other economic factors. They look at inflation, they look at petrol, they look at number of passengers traveling on that route, etc. And what a lot of people don't know 
is that you can't just say, well, I'm going to charge 20 rand on that particular route. You need mm -hmm. to look at what is the price of the market or, mm -hmm. you know, that everybody else charges along that same route. For example, um, if you take from here to, 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 um, to Israel Mall, right? Force Loris uses the same route. Jamiston Taxi Association uses, uses exactly the same route, mm -hmm. uh, right? From their various uh, uh, um, origin points and they charge a set route. So you need mm -hmm. to align yourself to that as well. Yeah. So it comes down, you can't just say, well, I'm gonna, I'm waking up today and I'm gonna charge 50 rand because I feel like it. No. Mm -hmm. So we also not yet to rip, rip off our consumers. We also, we understand the issue of affordability, you know, cost of living, etc. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, our customers, you know, our passengers, you know, they try and make the best of the salaries that they achieve or that mm -hmm. they earn. So about we know that 20 percent on average is spent or 30 percent is spent on transport so we need to keep that as minimal as possible to retain our customers at the end of the day, our passengers sure that's just, so 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 you're saying that let's say it's 10 rand so so you're saying let's say the taxi takes 15 people so you calculated 10 times 15 is 150 rand it takes about 30 rands petrol to get from here to there Maintenance a month on a taxi is about what I don't know two three thousand whatever it is. Um, yeah, well, work on if you if you look at let's use a figure of three thousand. So I always use about thirty percent, you know, uh, of of that would go towards maintenance. Okay, so thirty thirty percent of all the of the income of the of the taxi goes towards maintenance. Yeah, so that that's what you put as as maintenance. Then you know when you're working on those ratios, then. You'll also, you, you, then you'll also know, okay, where you are in terms of profitability. You know mm. what I mean? So if, you, if, if you're going to, if you start exceeding those numbers or, or ratios, then you know, okay, something is wrong. And you know, okay, I'm experiencing more breakdowns this month than I had the previous month. So you need to fix that in the new month. So mm. that's why you always have those capital reserves for maintenance, for fuel, for emergencies, for tires, etc. So that's why it's imperative. What I do is, for example, I don't buy my tires cash. I've got a tires account. I've got a rims account for things like that. So it just manages. Okay. It, it it helps you to manage your cash flow better at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay, sure, that's interesting, good. And I think now we've got a better understanding. So all of this is calculated because a lot of people think that these ta taxi guys, um, because they're not regulated, they they think there's no there's. How can I say? That there's not a lot of thought of things that and and it to, it's like you guys are estuaries, eh? It's like, <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. It's, it's, you, you know, if you we've got huge respect for our leadership, we've got huge respect for our mother bodies. Yeah, mm. you're gonna call them that and tacos. Um, you know, um, the likes of the National Taxi Alliance. You'll always hear those people coming out and defending the taxi industry because they, at the end of the day. Those are those are people that sits on the you know with a wealth of experience and in and, and, you know it's 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 also you know uh, us as, as 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 the industry we need to support them in that in that sense because um, they understand the challenges they understand the complexities and it's not to say we're making decisions on our own we basically we are regulated already mm -hmm. it's just government wants to get the tech side right. They want to get the, mm -hmm. the formalizing side right in terms of running as a comp company, as an entity. You know, it's uh, a proper money. Entity at the end of the day. Yeah, government, they want our money. Eh? Um, yeah. So, she, well, it's, it's, it's like any other. Sharice is our guy, Sharice, Sharice Foster, that's his wife. Sharice, who's that? Say hello, Fufu. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they even know said question the taxi yeah. driver doesn't count the money the person sitting in front in the middle counts the money that person should get a discount that's a difficult job well Why is that person not getting a discount for counting your money well we 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 always we who knows who knows uh, because drivers you know they they they're always up to something who knows that uh what what i've seen that's why um, never make a woman sit in front because at the end of the day, that's how our relationships evolve. And then you <laughs> find drivers, you find <laughs> drivers, they you know they they exempt that passenger from paying, but you know they they then you know 
at the end of the day, uh, they they call up on that passenger and they say, well, he had for not race so, and I see he did buy a mooi gelijk for now. So that's also a tip. Don't let women or your wife sit in front or your girlfriend sit in front of a taxi. Uh, I'd rather leave that for men. <laughs> yeah, because it's probably undeclared uh, as far as us, uh, as far as the driver is concerned. We don't get to, we don't know exactly what's going on there, Leroy. Uh, only the mm. driver, you know, would be able to tell the story as to why there's, you know, two, uh, there's always per load, there's always one or two people's money short. If you, uh, the you know what I mean? So obviously, they they put money for food, they take money for girlfriends, etc., etc. So, yeah. Those things are reality. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's a difficult job. And eh? you guys, look, I haven't been in a taxi in a while, but some of the taxi fares are like 8 rand 50. Now people are giving you 20 rands, 50 rands, and now you need to work out the change. Now I'm doing all of this work, but I'm not getting paid for it. I need to count. And if I give wrong change, the taxi driver is upset with me. Um, can I give you a tip or can yeah. I give up you as a tip? You know what I used to do? I used to travel to Varsity from uh, Brie Taxi Rank. Now, if you know Brie Taxi Rank, uh, Brie and Sour Taxi Rank uh, in Jovic CBD, you'll know they, those guys don't play. So, and I used to sit in front, you know, as a student. Yeah. So, if I collect all the money, or back bearing, bearing in mind at that time, I already, I was already, I already had a family, you know, uh, of uh, a generation of taxis. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so what I used to do, I asked the driver, how much must you get? Driver says I must get 105 rand from Brie to uh, Rao or university or UJ mm -hmm. University, as it's called, it's called now. I give him his 105 rand. Anything yeah. about it, I send back. Yeah. You say you guys sort that out. You guys saw that out. So that's, uh, that's what you uh, should do. So take, give the driver what he wants or what he, what, what's due to him at that yeah. particular point in time or load. The rest you just send back. Uh, mind you, the passengers, most of the time, th then you see the change comes out. Everybody starts th counting there at the back, the aunties, and then mm. you hear them. Ish, ufunan, you know, those sort of things. Umali, all, you hear those things, you know, uh, lingering there in the background to say, well, uh, I'm sure change, but let them sort themselves out. Nah. Driving to, to do a service of driving and getting you safe from point A to B. That's his job. That's a powerful tip. If I knew that back then. So guys, if you're sitting in front and you need to count that money, give the driver what he asks him. How much he says he needs? 100, 150. You give it to him. You send the change back. I hate it, that job. Yeah, that's all that you do. So Tell unfortunately... You know, uh, some of the vulnerable, they get, they feel that they, you know, it's their job, and then it, then it, some take out of their own pocket, you know, and and that's, and that's why I always say, you, the relationships, some relationships, even marriage, marriage has started from that front seat. Who knows? <laughs> marriages have started and marriages has ended from that front seat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> So, so the two tips you can give there is, I think we got two things out of there, guys. Just to summarize it here. Never let your wife or your girlfriend sit on that front seat, that middle seat. Dangerous one. Second one is give the driver what he's supposed to get and send the rest back and they'll sort that out. Um, yeah, and they, 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 he's late for school, he's late for all this. If you interview... Sorry, Leroy. The reason why yeah. drivers stop alongside the road because they get penalized for that. So us as mm -hmm. owners, we say, well, uh, you said you've got five loads, but why you only bring 550? Where's the 600? Mm -hmm. And you know what I've realized that, you know what, taxi drivers are not bad drivers. I've, I've, I've thought about this for a while, David. Tell me if I'm right. Taxi drivers... People say taxi drivers are bad drivers. The problem with taxi drivers is that the owners, you guys, tell him that you want this much per day. Right? Well, what he has to do, he has to, he has to drive like a maniac <laughs> to make sure that he gets that amount for you this evening or he gets penalized. 
So I, I'm wait, and then the, the second one is why they drive bad is because we as passengers just say stop after robot and he stops. And we don't care who's at the back. The passenger wants to get off and he has to stop. So that's why I don't get upset with 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 taxi drivers anymore because I understood the problem is not the taxi driver, the problem is the owner. And then secondly, the problem is the passenger because the passengers is like hey, after robot, um short left. And I'm gonna taxi driver stop. And they stop. They stop if I not say stop. So on the it. Yeah, the response is uh if you allow me to respond, uh, Leroy. The response is twofold. You know, let's say out there's two accounts of a story. Yeah. Firstly, you know, the taxi driver, some view it as the reason why he's rushing, right? Is because he's got a target. He needs to also, you know, think about his pocket. So, for example, in the morning, on average, a taxi gets about three to four loads, right? On mm -hmm. let's say three loads. But now he's rushing, right? Because he knows he's got the opportunity or the potential to get a fourth load. And uh, that fourth load will go undeclared. Uh, I'm not saying he's stealing. I'm saying undeclared. You can read between the lines. Mm, <laughs> mm. So, yeah. And then you also have, on the contrary, you have owners who says to drivers, <laughs> I'm putting your petrol in for a day. All that you do is you just bring my money. Mm. Right. Uh, it, uh, you know, it comes back to the management issue, how you manage your business, like I mm -hmm. said earlier. And then that driver is now, you know, uh, that owner puts, you know, the driver might not achieve the three loads mm -hmm. as the owner anticipated for that day. Now he needs to now drive like a maniac to meet his target for that particular day by the demand placed by the, uh, you know, by the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, he's gonna, his wages is going to be short at the, uh, at, the, at the end of the week etc so those sort of things do happen in the background but the conversation is twofold yeah so how does so how do taxi drivers get paid do they get paid a monthly salary or to say you get this much per month or is it that if you hit target you get so much or is it saturday you do your own load or if you've got extra how do they get paid okay so i've tried and my dad also and my, you know my brothers and my cousins you know we've all tried different systems but mm -hmm. some of the things let me give you an example of some of the things we say to the driver uh, on this week, you are working on a Sunday and Saturday. So on the Sunday, you'll be working for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, and who puts the petrol when they're working for themselves? Who puts in the petrol? Well, he needs to put the petrol for himself. Okay. So that's that's basically. So it comes down to the average that you're gonna that you got for that week. He's also going to get the average of that if you do mm -hmm. the numbers at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So it's quite you know it work it balances out. If it's month and then he works for himself, obviously he's going to make more. So mm. it's that you also need to look at so it's about seasonality. At certain days or weeks of the month, where taxes are not, you know, in terms of returns, they they don't produce the you know the, as much as the, the the as month end or the beginning of months or, yeah. or every month. So there's those seasonality as well. That's why you need to keep abreast of those things. Um, mm. You know, as a taxi owner and as the driver. So mm. some say, well, to the driver, um, on a Saturday, you'll be working for yourself, right? Mm. And in the Sunday, I will put the money away for maintenance and those sort of stuff. Um, some say, well, I'll pay you a wage every Friday, for example. Mm. So those, it, it all depends how you manage your cash flow, what works for you, et cetera. So there's different tried and tested. That's why we share ideas as the industry, as owners. We say, well, you know, I, I pay my driver in this way. Drivers, <laughs> believe it or not, Leroy, they always find a way to manipulate the system. So the system. Uh, they, they, they always, I won't say they're always a step ahead. That's, it just comes down to the owner to say, well, make sure you always a step ahead. Yeah. And don't give the driver the impression to think that they are always in control. Mm. And that's the problem. So you think be, put a tracker in the, in the taxi where you can monitor where he's been, where he stopped, how long he stopped you think it's wise to do that well i have in all my vehicles so i can say i've got a fleet management system and that worked for me but they they tell you you know um boss there was a kind a truck in front of me mm. uh, i had to stop for x mm. now it comes up on a tracker report it force breaks you know what i mean yeah. so they come up with all sorts of things that at the end of the day you know <laughs> you just need to make sure that you are profitable 
uh, and look at the numbers. That's why the numbers are such a key uh, part of, of, of our business nowadays, because there's so many things that's happening on our roads. If you're not going to be abreast of, of, of those issues and you're, you know, at the end of the day, if you're running a business, you know, you, 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 you might as well close shop. So yeah, those things are imperative. No, thanks, David. This is insightful. I think we, so dude, we've still got questions I haven't touched, but I don't think we're going to get to everyone. Guys, I'm asking questions that I want to know. These are questions I've always had on my mind. I was curious about how these taxis work. Um, and I think David is giving us good insights here. So we've got a few comments here, David, before I go on. It says, where was that advice from Rolanda when we needed it? The pressure was real. I think she's talking about counting the money. Men's going to dunk me and tell you for key out. Evan say, very, very insightful indeed. Being a youngster who utilize public transport on a daily, taxis are always pondered on the unseen business management side of things. Salute to the both of you for creating platforms to such empower. No thanks. Um, we appreciate. Well, Alistair says, great insights. Now, David. Yeah, man. Thanks, Alistair. Thanks, Lena. Now, maybe if we touch on the, maybe a bit of the negative and the sad side of it, right? Um, I'm not, I'm, look, as, as I said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to ask the question anyway. You'll answer then if you don't, that's fine. Uh, you've obviously lost a father. I'm not sure if it was with the taxi or if it wasn't, but, and I think you've lost a driver as well, right? Um, and obviously that was very sad times and, and both of them were killed. Now, did that affect how you see the business that you want to get? If it is that, I'm not even sure. I'm just asking. Um, did it affect your love for it? Did you want to get out? Do you want to get out? Do you want to stay in? How, how has that affected your, your – what's the right word you use? <laughs> how did it affect your, your – uh, your You – how did it affect your – your relationship with the taxi industry and the business. Oh, yeah. 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 Look, Leroy, losing a loved one or family member or worker is not easy, um, you know, uh, for anyone, for that matter, in this regard. Um, it's been tough. It's been challenging, you know, both from a personal and a business perspective. Um, you know, uh, my father, you know, um, the things he taught us, et cetera, et cetera. So we had to now come out of that and say, okay, what the things that he has taught us, how do we make him proud? What legacy has he left for us as his children to take this business to the next level? Mm -hmm. And I think spending so much time with him in the last two years, he, uh, you know, um, which I always will, will, will cherish, that basically, in a way, I also felt like he's setting me up for, for many things for my future, you know, so I can be a better person for my family, be a better person, for, for, for the community and also run a successful business at the end of the day. So I've learned a, a great deal from that as well. Look, the, the, um, the taxi industry is like any corporate environment. There is politics, right, Leroy? Um, we call it... We call it like any, like any corporate, corporate environment. Yes, yeah, so we call it in corporate, corporate politics. You know what I mean? Uh, so in, in taxis, there is... It comes with its own stigma. It's got its own set of politics as well. Um, you know, we uh, we not here, and I, and there were there were many a times. Um, you know, you were tempted with 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 with, um, with revenge. You know, there's 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 things that um, that you had to basically you had to change. You had, you had to adapt. For example, there were there were threats on we had of threats on my life. For example, on other family members or you know, it just got. At, at some point in time, it was it it it, it got it got a bit overwhelming. But yes. you know, you that's where you need to say, well, as a husband, as a father, you know, is 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 and taking those things that your dad has taught you and stuff like that, and and also you've got a lot of people that's looking up to you. You know what I mean? Um, how do you turn this in you know into a you know I won't say into an opportunity, but how do you make the best of the situation? You know? mm -hmm. Um, and we had to make the best of the situation, unfortunately, and carry on with that. Um, you know, um, I had a choice. That's why I, just, I just, for example, you know, I've got several gun, uh, guns <laughs> that I had to license. That's the reality that we we have to walk around with guns. You know, you know, I've got a bulletproof vest and all sort of stuff. But, you know, that's in a way to say, well, I only have one life. I need to protect it. I have a family. Um, so I, 
you know, you can't take life cheap at the end of the day as well. You know, we leave the investigations, we leave the all sorts of other stuff up to, and, and I believe God doesn't want us to revenge at the end of the day. So also my spiritual side has kept me, you know, sane and sound to say that's why, you know, um, I believe Bible schools play such a uh, important role, but, you know, in the midst of what's all the challenges, et cetera, what we, what we mean, to, you, if you feed your spiritual men, you know, yeah. uh, it creates a balance. I was I was speaking to someone at Bible College the other evening at lecture. She lost her husband last year, um, mm. and and she said to me, "Kula, was it for Bible school? I don't know how I would have carried through. You know, I would have survived this." So you've got your family structures, you've got your in laws, you've got friends, you know, close friends that became brothers. You know, uh, you guys, you, you, that support structure just basically motivates you to carry on. Um, mm. Yeah. I believe my dad, I believe my driver, you know, I mean, their souls race, rest in peace. They want, the, the honors is now, they reflect, looking at us and say, okay, what is it, what, what's the legacy are you, what are you going to take from what we've, what the purpose that we've served in our lives, what are you going to take from that and basically turn it around? So, yeah, so, 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 so it was quite tough, you know, yeah. but yeah, you had to be of the situation under the circumstances, unfortunately. Yeah, no, praise God and, and, and condolences again. Because I remember the, and I, I was actually because your father was supposed to coach me about it. Remember, he had the building and he built the building and units. And that time I was chasing knowledge and wanted mentors and coaches. And I got him at gym. And you guys were together the last. And that time we didn't know each other. It was just like, I, I. Yeah. <laughs> and and you were supposed to coach me and meet and come check the building, take me through some of the figures and how it works and how we built this. And I was so excited. And then obviously it was that sad day. So I was I was I was also very sad because we lost a lot, we lost a lot of knowledge and leading the community. And, and that's why we, yeah, that's why you know I always say um, that that's why I'm I'm taking and, and and my siblings as well in their own. Right, they, you know, we all take a, a very stuff, uh, a very, when you call it, a firm stance, um, in, in a hands on, in, 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 run it like a muscle in terms of the businesses or the business that my dad has entrusted us with. Because we see the tears that was plowed in that, we've seen the sacrifices that was made, and he lost his life, you know, being at the time, uh, at, the, at the time he was at the helm of the Texas Association. Is the chairperson, yeah. so he's lost. You know, he, he lost. He, he lost his life um, in that industry. You know, we're not saying it is the industry. Obviously, investigations. Um, well, well, we'll still have to prove that and all sorts of other stuff. But you know, we lost him within the taxi industry as at the time as the chairperson. So, what do we take in terms of what he left us with, and you know, and grow it and turn it into? into into a, a legacy or a, a business for the next generation so i think that's the, the responsibility on us it's tough but no. yeah we, we will i'm sure with grace and, and, and support will we and getting the right you know getting the right balance we'll be able to to do to, to, to at least leave our own legacy as well no thanks david thanks for 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 sharing openly and and Dian. and we know it's sad we know it's tough but um but well done for, I think what you said out of that, which, which stood out for me was you had to look at your priorities, look at your family, which comes first. And obviously if it wasn't for God, it, God brought you through this, which, which I think is, all, is always important, right? Because I know God has brought me through a lot of things. And I think that's thanks for, for sharing that as well. Yeah, it says, you know, the Bible says they overcame by the word of their testimony you know, <laughs> and by the blood of the lamb. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, our testimony will carry us, Leroy. Right? It's the most powerful weapon that we can use to, to basically motivate or change the world. Amen, amen. So now what, what, another thing that we've noticed in this time is that you're actually listening in Bible school. We thought you were sleeping. <laughs> yeah, although, yeah, although it does. Shall we see that she's listening right. to what you said there? It's quite late. Uh, on, yeah, on a weekday. Yeah, I come home half past ten. Believe it or not, we sit in next year about three and a half hours. I think Darren knows that. Um, I think his wife is there. You know that as well. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's quite tough. Uh, but yeah, we we try and make the best of it. Um, you know, and I believe I said to 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 Parker this morning that um, you know one of the ways uh, we need to give back to God is to basically tell people about God and educate ourselves in the Word of God, because we we succeed in every aspect of our life, whether it be financial, whether it be business. Uh, whether it be in our personal goals, our fitness goals, our career for that matter. But what are we doing for God? Mm. So I believe that, edu- you know, studying the word of God and showing ourselves a proof, that's one of the ways we it's we we as human beings are giving God, back to God. Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks, David. That's in, Guys, that, write that down. If there's anything you take from today, uh, Take that. That was that was, and that's encouraging to me as well. I think what's it, Matthew three verses thirty three or thirty six that says, "Seek first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto thee." So when you seek God, everything else, whether it be peace, whether it be for yourself that came to a difficult time with your father and stuff, whether it be finances, whatever it is, that if you seek God, that things will be and added unto thee. And my Leroy, the, the driver that I've lost. Or that we've lost became family. He went on holidays with us. He was mm-hmm. the first driver of the quantum that I bought or that we bought in 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's ever, you know, ever since he's been with us. You know, um, so yeah, so so it's only the peace of God that can rule your heart for you to to forgive, you know, and move on from that. And at the mm-hmm. same time, you know, we we we're trying our best. Um, although it's challenging for us, it's been tough. Our pockets has been affected you know, in some way or the other, but God opened up other opportunities for us, which we're grateful for. God sent the right people along our way, you know, and it transcended into other business opportunities for us as well. But yeah, we, we're trying our best under the circumstances, Leroy. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much and praise God. So you're talking about this has opened up other business opportunities. It's opened up new ventures. Tell us about that. What has it opened up? What are you and how is that going Tell us a bit more about the new ventures that you're busy with. Yeah. Um, once again, thanks for the opportunity, Leroy. Um, so basically the first question we ask ourselves before starting the business, this business is we, we, we started working on this business since last year, August, September, just coming out of a stiff lockdown, as you know. We ask ourselves the question, how do, what problem exists within the taxi industry? What mm. problem exists? as for motorists what problem exists for people owning cars etc mm-hmm. and th- once you've basically solved that problem we said well taking our and and, and taking our own experiences as as as, as taxi owners as, as you know as cars fanatics etc etc taking those experiences how do we turn that then into a value proposition and sell it to our customers and offer it to our customers mm-hmm. so for example we said um instead of customers going to spare shops let's create an online platform to make it easy for for them to where we can actually take their space uh and deliver it you know to their doorsteps that's the one aspect of our business the other value proposition is to say in terms of you know us as a taxi industry you know what we used to do and i spoke i alluded on to this earlier we pay a fortune to redo our engines yeah you know we have any two engineers and as you know, the reality for some of us, you do an engine two, three times a year. That's just the reality of the taxi yeah, industry. On, the check, on, on one test. Yeah. <laughs> two by year. Three yeah. by engine. Yeah, that's worst case scenario. So if you plan if you play planning for worst case scenario, then that will basically allow you to adjust your maintenance allocations accordingly. Mm. So if something does unforeseen happen, you'll be able to fix your, your text in real time and get it back on the road. With us, as you know, it's time is money. So the more t- time that text is, is broken down, it, it in, it's loss of revenue at the end of the day. Right. So we said, well, for the taxi industry, instead of them basically going to engineers, etc., and running around and looking for engines, parts, and stuff like that, let's supply them with complete engines at affordable rate. So we're the only mm-hmm. supplier uh, in, in, in um, how at the moment um, and our customers are coming from the likes of Kuruman, Northern Cape, Mafi King, Springs, Brackpan, all over to, to come and support us and we're quite humble in, 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 in oh, wow. you know, in things. Um, so they're buying these engines from us. So it's uh, four-way engines, it's quite popular. So if you don't know, Leroy, 
4Y can be basically put into a bucket, can be put into a car, can be put into a taxi. It's economical. It's it's sort of like the the, the mini 4Y. 4Y. 4Y My knowledge of cars is petrol when it, the light goes on and yeah. So so, so that. So, so that basically allows us to make a difference in, in, in that respect in, in terms of the, the engine market. And also you have the tires. We deliver tires, we've partnered up, we've created strategic partners, you know, with the likes of Superquick, with the likes of other, um, you know, there's uh, Sholto Rums and Tires, Shago Rums and Tires, and Reed Fontaine, and they're uh, close to Coma. Those are guys that we work with to say, well, um, if we have customers that, um, it was that's, that's looking for tires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Can we send them to you for fitment? Those sort of things. So we've created strategic partners in the mm -hmm. background as we're building our own infrastructure. Um, you know, we looked at our numbers about a week ago, and thank God, all the capital that we've invested, basically the business in such a short space of time, have paid that back, and we're starting to generate profit. Oh, over nice. of, uh, about so we quite. You know, we're quite pleased with that performance in the sense. So now the honors is on us now to take the business to the next level. Um, we, we're now in the process of promoting the mechanical workshop side. So as you know, we we obviously in a business park and the mechanical workshop side hasn't taken off as such, you know, um, as, as, as yet in, this, in the sense that we haven't promoted that as much as we would like because obviously there's other pockets of our business that was more profitable that we've been so it's all so it's all about finding the resources and and basically creating a diverse stream stream of income that's sustainable so yeah that that's 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 the business side on 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 f pindaonia on the electrical side thank god what's the business name to say it again f pindaonia supplies fp on indaonia supplies so write that down guys fp on the one year supplies uh supplies, yeah so we so we quite start in in a sense you know coming from the township um of Reicher park that we that we that that we that um, so far we that you know we we we've, we've sort of and hope you know it's a testimony to other aspiring entrepreneurs out there to say you know let's say on sound work me we've basically it that that that's a lie you know it's 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 about it's it's about people you know uh, um Finding the right people to partner up with, etc., and we thank God for our partners, etc. Um, and you know, overnight, within a, a month or two, you know, you 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 the business has paid back. So it shows that you know everything that you invested. So it, it yeah. shows anything is possible. So now the responsibility is on us now to take it to the next level. And also, with what we had to do as part of that, as I alluded earlier, uh, really, Roy, is to put all structures in place. So we're we're not only looking at the tires and the spares and the four-way engines as being a main supplier of that in housing at the moment. Um, what we're also looking at is to say, how do we uh, penetrate other markets? Like mm. we already have our in-house uh, electrician mm. and um, that culminated into other opportunities, which we bas basically, as we speak, we're exploring that. So, mm. um, so we look out for that space. So we, our electrical side will, you know, that will take off, you know, in 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 and expand in a way that we haven't anticipated. So yeah, there watch us the space for that. But we'll keep you guys updated with regards to that. And then also, yeah, so it's it's pretty exciting. Um, but I suppose if if, if you're not going to create the environment or mm -hmm. the, the, the or lay the foundation to for people to invest in you or your business or take yourself yeah. seriously, don't expect people to do that. So mm -hmm. we got you. Know, um, that's 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 so we've created opportunity for ourselves for in an environment for people to invest in us and to support us mm. you know um, and even if we make a small difference that's you know that's something that we you know it's it's a job well done for us on a daily basis whether it's big or small no well done there brother you well sure so that's getting your money back in a, in a few months um and profitable but that's not easy eh? yeah it's it's, it's, well it's, done there once, once again, we, we had a meeting um, about a week or two ago, and we looked, you know, we, um, we always keep abreast of our numbers, you know, uh, and that's, that's also a message that I want to, you know, I've got so much more respect now for entrepreneurs like yourself um, and other in, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs also, uh, you know, um, they, they don't, people don't tend to, you know, they don't see the sacrifices that entrepreneurs make. They don't see the, 
the red tape, they don't see the challenges, they don't see all the compliance that businesses have to endure just to basically get it get started up. I think that's why they say within the first three years or five years, businesses fail. Yeah. And and, 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 and mind you, government, they, they make they do not make they not, they don't make it easy for you. But mm. if you if you basically oh, you know if you get your compliance in order, etc., it opens up another world of opportunities for you. Yeah. So yeah. always look at, always look at you know always look at the at, at the bright side of things as well and persevere and carry on. Mm. David, you've said a, you've said a lot there. I think some of the powerful. We need to just stop you for a while here because you're giving. I think you're giving some good pointers here. We've been going on for an hour and ten minutes, but I think let's do another five minutes just to summarize <laughs> that you said. You said first, you guys found a problem that, and you look for a solution for that problem. So I think that's a good tip, guys. So if you're out there and you're looking for an opportunity, I think find a problem that you can solve. I like the saying where it says, David, it says no problems, no profit. Correct. So the only time you make a profit is when you're solving a problem. So find a problem to solve. And Correct. sometimes it's not a big problem. Sometimes it's something close to you that you that that is there that you can solve. I'm just I'm just trying to summarize that that you've just to get, get some tips out here. And then what did you say? Need. Meet the need early, right? Meet the need, Meet eh? The need. Yeah. The, um, you know, it's 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 good and behold that you know you you start something that everybody else is also offering. But what sets you apart? What makes mm -hmm. you a need? What makes you unique? That people should come to you as Leroy or as Epino and your supplies. There must be something that sets you apart in such a competitive economic environment. If if you're not mm -hmm. going to be if if you, if there's nothing if you don't have that X factor. You, you know, you're going to basically struggle. It's going to take you longer to break even. You know, mm -hmm. we've achieved that in a short space of time because we've obviously, uh, um, we've got the balance right in terms of, but the, the, the start up, the origination of it was sticking and answering the question and solving the problem, meeting mm -hmm. the need. Sure. Powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, conversations with entrepreneurs that inspire and experts to admire. And we've got an entrepreneur, we've got an expert here, as I said, a man of many talents here, guys. Um, David, I think we've come to the end and we've got people that have been staying on for the whole hour. And so this has been, it's been, are you still here? Are you there? Right. Okay. You were so still for a while, I thought you, I thought you froze. So guys, thank you. I've asked him if you do have, maybe we can take one question. Maybe one question. For, um, I've answered. I've, I've asked the questions. I want to know um, if we haven't covered any of you. Maybe send, leave a message, and David will maybe come back, or I'll answer if I can to the to the questions. Um, but what we are going to do now, David, is give us where. So basically, what you guys do is you deliver spares, not just for taxis, right? Correct. Not just for taxis. So if I need, I'm here in my. Um, house now and one of the buckies needs an engine or needs something and I know what it is I can say listen David this is what I need you guys get it you source it you have it and you deliver it so that's one service okay that's correct and the, the other service is that if you if you do have if you want tires what is it any tire or, or is it just certain types of tires or is it anything can you guys get anything yeah so I mean yesterday I got an order from super quick you know, for Pirelli. Super quick was ordering from you. Yeah. <laughs> ah, my man. Yeah. So, so you know, that's the sort of strategic partnership that we've established, uh, yeah. Leroy. And we and we remain humble and extremely grateful for that. Um, now it's a case, you know, the challenge is on us. Like I said, as much as you know, we're not getting to all the. Um, we want to get to to all the uh, value streams or value propositions, like the tires, like the space delivery. We want to market it at a at a greater level. But right now, you know, due to resources and time, and we also have to manage our costs at the end of the day. You know, because we're running a business, um, it's a bit that's a bit of a challenge. So yeah, so we but we want to know, you know, want to let people know we are there. We we do exist in those in that regard. Um, and, and, and watch the space. Uh, we'll be spending a whole lot on, on marketing 
you know, one of the partners, Rich, says, you always say you smooth any men's gesichte is. So mm. yeah, um that's 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 part of, 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 of our of our strategies to our marketing strategies. We're gonna continue to be in people's faces and we ask people to support us. I mean it's it's your own coming out of a township, you know, uh competing with the big guys out there and who know, you know, I would have thought, you know, where we are today that the likes of, of super quicks will be uh, ordering from us. But yeah, that's yeah. where we are and we remain well, grateful for that. Well done and congratulations. So guys, so that's spares, delivery, that's tires, that's if you want services. Now that's the new part you guys have added to it. Um, the only supplier of, is it 4Y? We need to just double check members. 4Y. My engines. 4Y. It's, it's, 4Y. it's quite a reliable economical engine. Yeah, yeah. so it's 4Y engines, Leroy. 4Y engines, guys, you're gonna contact. Where do we get a hold of you? Where's your office? Where's the address? What's your numbers? Your email address? Your websites? Um, where can we find you? Our, our, our email address is sales at FB Naonia Supplies. So sales, FB, it's like in uh, Foster Parker in Naonia, uh, N D A W O N Y E Supplies. Um, that's basically our email address. Our website is www.fbnaoniasupplies.co.za fp now on your supplies at your we are on facebook fpns tire uh, space and tire delivery services fpns electrical services so that's where you can find us on facebook uh, we've got a whatsapp number 071-860-4725 that's number you can also use telephonically to to lodge your uh, orders or your space orders we also have uh, 0119138261, 0119138261. That's also another platform. So we try to have all, you know, all platforms available at customers' disposal to make it easier and convenient for them. And I, I mean, it's uh, ask uh, my wife, my <laughs> beautiful wife, and our phone, even at night, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I was <laughs> chatting to Parker the other day and I showed him, I said, guys are calling 2 o'clock in the morning or they're sending you a WhatsApp. Yeah. you know ordering ordering engines and those things you know the, you know those things it just makes it more worth you know um why we in business it just reminds us you know why we in business so people uh, are responding quite well to us and you know they're taking heed of of our value of the value that we bring to customers and it's not only about selling space Leroy. one of the things that we also wanted to try and preach is you know as women for example you know we don't know we don't know much about mechanical side and stuff like that and so what we do is we offer you mechanical advice as well oh, so you okay. it's just about buying a, a spare uh you know uh, parts and there you go it's about is that the right fit for that vehicle mm. so, no, so you know um what makes what sets us apart is that if you go to anywhere to, to most of the spare shops they take your money and you take your your, your parts and you leave you yeah. don't know where that is actually suitable. You don't know whether you've actually paid the right price. Mm -hmm. You don't know whether it's actually the right type of part for your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So where we come in, we spend a bit of time and we actually engage you further. And we say, well, let's bring you a different kind of value to say that part, you've actually overpaid for it. Or that part is the incorrect one. There is a suitable replacement for that part. Why don't you use that? And we obviously tap into our, you know, into our strategic partnership network. To bring that solution to you as the customer so a lot of our customers they came to you know that's why they always come back to us and they come from all over it's because they've seen the value of that service in the background we don't just sell we actually try and make you know we we, we try and add value to where we can you know well that's a lot of value then i think so guys you've got that there was a lot of numbers david i think what you're going to do is we're going to put that in the comment section <laughs> I don't think anyone got that number. Um, but the nice thing is we've got, we've got a few people live, but we always have hundreds of people that listen to these interviews afterwards. So we're going to put that in the comment section for you guys. Um, contact them. Um, delivery of spares, tires, services. And if you don't know what's wrong with your car, go check it. If you like me and you don't know anything about cars, um, then first maybe go speak to them and they can guide you on uh, take your car. Then they can we in Waveville, okay. Seven in Crocker Road, Waveville. Yeah. So a, seven Crocker Road, Waveville. Yeah, Waveville, Jimiston. So it's about 
you know, about seven to 10 Ks just from the, the Boxburg CBD. Um, it's just off Decamar Road in, Wait, in Waiteville. We're in a secure business park, you know, um, and we've got, a, you know, quite a, quite a, uh, um, um, if you want to call it, um, quite a hospitable <laughs> workshop. So we're ready to welcome. Well, I'm visiting Friday. I was supposed to come last Friday, but I, so Friday, yeah, I mean, you, I go see how hospitable you are this Friday. Let's see you. Let's see how hospitable they are. Yeah, so we actually, we got a contract to wash cars, you know, within the business park. So we're oh. the only one that wash cars when we've got a nice foam machine there, et cetera. So in that regard, we were quite, you know, we we, we were quite uh, grateful for that opportunity as well. So we wash, you know, all the tenants there or the business owners, we wash their cars for them, you know, while they're doing their normal course of business. So yeah, so oh. we also encourage our customers to come. Not only will we service your car, you also get a free foam wash at the end of the day because we run official car wash within the business park as well. Okay, In fact, nice. every three customers are calling the washing. They want to wash their car. <laughs> okay. All right, they're there, car wash. Uh, but well, these guys, are, when you come there and they're not there and they're busy and they've got cars and stuff, um, we just... Close. Hey, this is you see when you're working from home, then you have someone coming in here, but um, that's fine. So, David, guys, we're gonna put it in there. Thank you for logging on. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, we I'll got my YouTube link is there, so you can listen to this video again. And we're gonna put the contact details in there, so you can contact them, go visit the company. And yeah, so that's it from my side, David. Any last words before we log off? Yeah, Leroy, just once again in the same breath, I want to say thank you for giving us as aspiring entrepreneurs and you know um, as business owners the platform to tell our stories. It's not about it's not about us. It's about the difference we bring to people and the difference we make in other people's lives. So yeah, um, and thank you to you for one, once again your for using your gift so effectively. You know that God has entrusted you with, and thank you for the entrepreneurship spirit that you that you carry across all the, or, or you know wherever you go. And we 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 learn, you know, we learn a great deal from you, um, and continue to do the good work. Yeah, and to all our viewers, thank you so much for taking the time. But for for everyone else that's still gonna listen, uh, we remain humble. Thank you so much, and we're looking forward to your support. Thanks, David. Thanks, guys um thanks for listening david thanks for the insight thanks for being open with us um thanks for the text that that was insightful and all the best with your new businesses um so very successful i know god is going to take you from to from glory to glory um so god bless you well done we look up to you we appreciate you um and yeah and we'll come back in the next maybe what we'll do is when we at the workshop we can do a live so you guys can see what it looks like Live. Let's see the foam wash and let's see the hospitality when we're there. If it is as he says, I'm sure I'm sure it is. <laughs> so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, awesome. once again, conversations with entrepreneurs that inspire and experts to admire. Every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Facebook Live and on YouTube. Click on the YouTube link. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Next week, we have Andrew Walker. Now, Andrew Walker is an international property investor. Andrew's done about over 600 property transactions. 600, no, and he's 40. So one man has done about 600 property transactions. So we're going to get him on next week um, to share his, how he did it. We're going to say, Andrew, 600, how did you do it? So, so look, tune me next week and all the best. Um, God bless and thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. Love you. Um, see you next week. Awesome stuff.